Hey there, this is TJR. And um, if you've ever watched any of my YouTube videos here, performing live on YouTube, or just seen me at a gig playing live, if I'm solo and there's no band with me, I'm using a loop station pedal. And uh, I'm doing this video right now as kind of a, an introduction to using a loop station because I've had a lot of people ask me about it and how do I use one. Uh, first of all, let me explain to you what a loop station pedal does. Uh, it allows you to record yourself while you are playing. It allows you to play that recording back so that then you are free to just sing and not have to play your instrument or create a secondary rhythm to go over the rhythm you just recorded and play that back. Uh, you can layer multiple parts on top of each other if you want. Uh, I primarily use it to just record a rhythm and then be able to play a guitar solo after that. And I'll give you a demonstration right now of how I use it. So here we go. And uh, one, two, three, four. <laughs> There you go. Okay, so there you just saw a little demonstration of me using one with just a, a very simple rock and roll rhythm. Now, a lot of people have said to me, I can't make it work right. It just sounds wrong when I use it. The trick is all in your timing. And that's something you have to work out. So I'm going to give you a little, a little uh, practice tip that hopefully will help you out. Now, first of all, there's all models of loop stations. And so let me familiarize you with what I'm using. I'm using one of the older Boss RXL models. It's very simple to use. The pedal uh, to facing your left as you're looking down on the floor at the pedal is the record and playback pedal. So you're playing a rhythm. You hit record, you record until you're ready to have it come back at you, and then you hit playback. And there you go, and now you're free to do whatever you're going to want to do next. For me, that's to play a guitar solo. The pedal to your right, as you're looking down on the floor at it, is the stop pedal. It just stops it. Hold it down for longer than a few seconds, and it will erase it so that you're free to create something else. Now, some people store multiple loops that they've created and then call them up using the pedal that they, they use. I never do this. I create a loop, use it until I'm done with it, then I erase it, and then I move on to the next. I, not that, I don't like storing stuff into memory and then recalling them that way. I find it doesn't work very well live because if you record it at one tempo, and then you are playing live and you're, maybe your emotions are different that day and you play it back at yourself uh, in the middle of a song, it might be at a different tempo and the whole thing's gonna sound wrong. So I just prefer to do it live on the fly while I'm playing. And so the trick is in the timing, of course. So I'm gonna give you a little tip here. Most songs are in four, four times. So one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, starting with just a pulse, a simple dunk, 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 dunk. And I recommend you start with a very simple rhythm like that, just a pulse. So one, two, three, four. So on one, you play the rhythm once, at least once to get the timing right. Then on the next one, on the next one, you hit record, two, three, four, playback, two, three, four. And with my pedal, that's the same pedal, the one facing to your left as you look down to it on the floor. So I would just, let me erase the, the, what I just created here, and let's start here. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four, record, two, three, four, playback, two, three, four. And it should sound consistent like this. So just a simple four count pulse work on this and practice it over and over again until it sounds consistent and smooth. Once you've done that, then try a more complicated rhythm. Try a standard little rock and roll Chuck Berry rhythm. your way up. Start with very simple rhythms first, work your way up. As you experiment with a loop station, you'll begin to find that sometimes you want to, may not always want to start on one. Sometimes you need to start on and one, or one, two, three, and four, or and right before the four, or four and. 
It just depends on the rhythm you're doing and how you feel it as you play it. And that will help you learn how to do it. Now, mine, of course, is let's do, does everything on just one hit of the pedal. There are some that are only a one pedal loop station where, you know, you can hit one on record and then um, you can hit one on playback. But for stop, you've got to hit twice or something like that. And those are a little trickier. I don't use those, so uh, you'll, you'll have to work those out on your own. I'm using the two foot pedal version. I think that works best. I think it's easiest as far as just getting the timing right. And that's the real key. If you do it wrong, it's going to sound like a broken record uh, or a record that skips, for those of you that remember vinyl. Let me try to do it wrong on purpose and see how I do here. So, one. Hear that? See? And that's what happens when your timing's off. And I make mistakes too. Sometimes I don't get it quite right and I gotta start over and do it again. So while you're playing that, you just hit, you hit the stop button, hit the stop erase button, hold it down so it erases, and then you just start over again. Anyway, so this is just kind of, like I said, just a, a starter, primer for beginners. You know, try that real simple pulse, beat of four, count of four. You know, one, two, three, four, record, two, three, four, playback. Try that with different rhythms. And once again, as you go, you might have to try different things where instead you land on three or and four or and one, you know, in order to, to synchronize it right. It just depends on the rhythm you're doing. So I hope that helps. Please leave your comments. Let me know what you think. And uh, all the best to you in your playing.